Hi, Stephanie. Hey, hi, Bunny. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for taking my call at five o'clock on a Friday. Oh my gosh, I was so thrilled to hear from you. Thank you for reaching out and uh, wanting to learn more about us. I do. I really want to learn more about you for, for a lot of reasons, because right now, you know, it's almost Mar you know, March 1st, yep. getting closer to May 1st when everyone's making their choices. And a lot of people are talking about your program from Pittsburgh Unifieds. Great. Like you are on the top of their list, you know, the, the top three mm -hmm. program that people are like, FIU, 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 I'm interested in it. But there's always these questions. And I'm not able to answer the questions unless I like Google your stuff. And I thought it'd be easier just to talk to you and get the Absolutely. answer. And Happy I appreciate to see you that. again. Yeah. So yeah. I know that from Pittsburgh, you called back some really, really talented kids who have a lot of options. You sure did. Yeah. So those kids that have a lot of options, like I thought, you know, let's talk to you about why you should be one of their options, you know, and yeah. what makes you different from these programs? Because the number one question I have about you is because you have a BFA program already, mm -hmm. a musical theater at FIU, and you're the BM program. Yes. So some of the kids even applied for the wrong school by mistake. Um, but frankly, they're, they're interested in FIU because of you, like your oh. excitement that you bring into it, your ex expertise, you. and just your passion. And, you know, I trust my kid with you in a heartbeat. So thank you. I, I think that, that, uh, that you're a really important piece because people send kids to a program, but more often they send kids to the people. So yeah, I know what you mean. Congratulations for building that Thank about you. FIU, but let's talk about it and yeah. what makes the difference between a BM and a BFA because people question, oh, I don't know about FIU because it's a BM, but they don't question that BW is a BM, right. that um, you know Manhattan School of Music is a BM, there's a Steinhardt that's a BM. What makes FIU BM the program for them? Okay, great. So there's a bunch of things. So first of all, yeah, a BM is a very music focused degree, right? Now it, it's, we're gonna to appeal to the student who wants to take all the, the music theory and the sight singing and, and the piano because you get four semesters of each one of those things. Um, you also get an incredible music business course, by the way, that, that uh, teaches you how to promote yourself and how to read and sign contracts and all sorts of things like that too. We really are a very music focused degree. However, you still have your dance requirements and you do still have your acting requirements. And you're also going to get all kinds of performance opportunities in our program that you're not necessarily going to get in other schools. So do you want to hear about some of those to start out? I, so is, is a BM like more of a conservatory it, within a school? I think so. Yeah. We kind of consider ourselves very much like a conservatory circumstance, right? We have um, a, a relatively small faculty, a relatively small student body within the music school. And there's really a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. We all kind of know each other. Um, so it's it's definitely a very personalized conservatory style way to learn. You know, when you say and you lead with the fact that um, there's a lot of musicianship and there's a lot of sightseeing, I, I think that's really important that with me having a senior going into auditions, like yes. it's really important to be able to like pick up that music. Can you talk Absolutely. about that? Yeah, for sure. In fact, I often use the example of um, exactly that. Like, what are you going to do if you go into an audition and they hand you music of something that they're workshopping or and you don't have the piano skill or you don't have the sight singing skill? Um, you're not going to feel very confident going back into that audition room again. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've had the experience of working with other people that have BFA degrees, and oftentimes in a BFA degree, the music part, the musicianship part tends to be a little bit um, on the weak side compared to some of the other skills. And so it's it's one of the reasons why I can really get behind this program. I was always a musician first and um, and being a theater person, sort of um, having the music skills gave me a huge amount of confidence compared to a lot of other people in the theater who didn't have that kind of background. So it's, it's yeah. definitely an advantage if you can oh. read music, which you don't, We I don't think you realize that until you're in the mix and you already picked a program. How right. important. 
It's really true. It's really true. When I think about like gaining piano skills, it's easier to gain piano skills when you're in a class that you have to do it for four semesters than after your degree ends and you're trying to figure out how to bring a new instrument into your life and into your schedule and all those things. You know what I mean? So this okay. circumstance that we create to kind of to be like a real incubator of, of those kinds of musicianship skills is something that would be much harder to get after the fact. It just, you know, it's just a fact. I think now that we've been in a program, like I think that the musicianship is almost like learning a different language and two semesters is not enough to learn Latin. No, no. <laughs> you know, and that is one of the differences between the BFA that's that's here at FIU and the BM. The BFA students don't get nearly as much. Um, they don't get as many voice lessons. They don't get... Um, nearly as much music theory and piano, they just don't get that. And so, you know, those, their coursework is, is geared very differently. Um, but it's definitely, I think it's a huge, it's a huge bonus for kids that really want to be able to do a lot of performing and that singing and music is really important to them that the BM is really um, the track that they could be happy in. How many voice lessons do they get? Is it included a week? Every week? Yes. So in the BM, they get um, a one full hour lesson every single week. In the BFA, they get a full hour every other week. And okay. I know that there are other BFA programs that also like sometimes they have it that freshman year, you don't get a full hour or things, you know, there are just some differences in that. Is but there any extra say, cost in that or is that part of the tuition? Oh no, that's all part of the tuition. Yeah, that's, that's included right. in the degree. Yep, absolutely. Okay, well Let's talk about BM versus BFA in the real world. What do you, what do you okay. see is important? You know, I think that the BFA degrees generally will focus more on required aspects of acting and dance that you may not see in the BM degree. However, it's there. I just want to make really clear it's there. Um, for one thing, in the in the BM program that I coordinate, you only have a couple of semesters of dance that are actually required. However, you have access to all of the dance that FIU has to offer, and you can even do a minor in dance. So in that way, you can get that. That's a skill that you feel like you don't have enough of, or you just really want to get more of. It's there. But okay. I think that traditionally, um, BFAs have emphasized maybe dance more than BM programs. I mean, I think that would be true. And even acting. So we have certain required acting courses. And even in our theater department and in the music school, we have some overlap in terms of, you know, we teach both of the students on both sides. Um, but within our BM, you can actually uh, take more classes over in the theater department. You can do a minor in theater. You can, um, well, even we're going to be supplementing a lot of the extra performing. Um, there'll be guest directors brought into the BM. To, so you're going to get a lot of acting training. I really feel like our program is the best of all the worlds because mm -hmm. you can take what you want outside of what's offered in the core and what's required in the core. Right. This might not be a question for like the straight and narrow, but why would someone pick the BM at FIU versus the BFA? And not to bash the BFA, but what makes you different? Um, like why would there be another, why would there be a BA or BM musical theater major when there's already a, a BFA? Like why are they yeah. doing it? First of all, both of the curriculums were approved last year. So both of them are actually new programs. They just accepted children, children, students, into the <laughs> program, children, students into their program a year ahead of us. We decided to wait a year. And I, I had this position partly to get things off the ground before we actually bring students in. So it's not that one is a lot older than the other. They're actually the same age. Okay. Um, but I mean, for instance, one of the main differences, I think at the moment we are doing a minimum of four full musical theater programs um, shows each academic year. So that's going to be two programs in the fall and two programs in the spring semester. And then there will be a joint musical as well that we will do with the theater department. So that's, you know, for our students, they will have the opportunity to, to have five different musical performance opportunities a year. So when you say that's crazy, yeah, it's a lot. You say that five, but are you saying that there's five to audition for or five that they could actually perform in? Oh, there's going to be. So basically, we are requiring our freshmen to get on their feet the first semester. So you are expected 
to be in uh, to audition every single semester and you will be cast in either the larger musical that we do in the music school each term or you'll be in the cabaret and but you you will have access to that every single year and we don't do that thing where we wait a year for you to be able to be eligible for performances so in addition to those four there's one joint larger one that's done with the theater department so that's how we get the five does that make sense and so I was like okay that you guys have five but when you audition, you'll only be in one all year. It's not that. It's oh, no, 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 not that at all. No, everybody will be in something every single semester. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know, and- I don't mean it, to be surprised, but that, you're like, wow. Okay. Yeah, no. I mean, it, it's a performance degree. We look at this as a performance degree. And so we want you to be on your feet from the start. And the other thing is that, you know, all these kids come in with all this amazing performance background already. Right. And right. they've had coachings and they've been in these summer programs and they they know a lot, you know, they're not babies. And they're also, um, you know, they're artists in their own right already. And we're not, we don't feel like we need to put that on a shelf for a year. Um, we really want them to feel like they are right in the middle of the action from the moment they get on campus. That makes a lot of sense because a lot of these kids in high school, they're in their theater program, they're on the soccer team, they're in a show choir. And then, you know, right. you go to where okay you're gonna to to sit for a little bit just take your classes get used to oh college kind yeah. of thing you know, you I'm, know? I'm just, I've never really understood that mentality um you know that a lot of the programs have I think yeah, it, works, it. it works for them but this it is does. Something different. yeah it does work for them but yeah, yeah well, so. so if if a student comes there and they want to perform they can perform what else is there in terms of performance are there like kid run shows are there choirs or their showcases like what what else do you have sure so in addition to the musical theater productions that we do there are um we have more than 16 different ensembles that students can participate in so there's things like gospel club choir and acapella and there's um you can be in a jazz combo and be a jazz vocalist if you want to are those like um, little clubs or or audition? those are actually ensembles? ensembles that you can take for credit with your elective for credit club. Yeah. Wow. And, and within the BM, here's another thing. You are required to do a number of semesters of choir, which I, I find that to be a huge plus because, yeah. you know, having worked in another um, musical theater program before, those students didn't have access to being in an ensemble, being in a choir. And they really missed it because a lot of kids who come into musical theater. It's fun. Theater, I know, and they've been in choirs their whole, you know, high school, middle school lives. So to so they miss that, you know. So um, you get to be, and, and also our choir does amazing things. Like our choir has taken international trips, and I mean, it's it's really pretty incredible situation. Yeah. The other thing is, oh, I don't think you know this. Our senior year, because we are a BM degree, you're required to do a solo recital. So our musical theater majors will have a solo opportunity to do a one person show or maybe they could bring some friends in and do some duets or trios or whatever but that's um, amazing that's yeah so isn't that great I know yeah. I know that's, that's great for your real too like to be focused just on you absolutely absolutely hmm. um and the other thing oh here's another thing I don't think you know do you know about our four plus one I don't know if we've talked about this. So you have the option in your junior year, you can decide if you want to stay for your master's degree. And when you do that, it's only a one year addition. So we call it a four plus one. So basically in five years, you can have a bachelor's and a master's degree in musical theater. Wow. Which is great for the people who might want to come back and, and teach at some point, because you need to have, you know, higher degrees to be able to do that. To and, teach. you know, if something like COVID would have happened, like a lot of kids would have been like, yeah, I'll just take another year. So that's a great exactly. thing. And you, it's not mandatory. It's something that you can opt into. Exactly. Exactly. In your third year, um, you basically apply to be part of that four plus one program. I'm, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but is, is it a lot more money like to get a master's or is it going to be like the same you know, our tuition is relatively similar for bachelor's and master's. I think it's a difference of, I mean, I, I, you can look this up probably, but I think it's only a difference of about a thousand dollars a semester. Wow. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, you know about our prices too, right? Our tuition prices. Well, that is a question that I have on the end, but I, 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 I just want to talk about your program first because, because oh. <laughs> you're, you're, the the fun the, the you know you look at the price tag later like okay okay fine <laughs> if you need to know you can't afford it right <laughs> right 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 but I guess I'm just on the track of like talking about this amazing program but when you say you know it's FIU Florida International Univ yes. 
philosophy? Like, where does international come from? Like, do you have a trip to London? Do you have exchange so, students? What, what makes it international? Okay, great. Well, first of all, what makes FIU international? I think, you know, and I don't really know the exact history, but very early on, um, it was understood that that the, that the university would have a very international focus in terms of students and faculty and research, um, you know, from that point of view, that it would be a very globally focused um, university. That said, I think that our student body, I think we have about 150 different countries represented just within our student body alone. Same. Yeah, it's really cool. So, I mean, that's from the university's point of view, that's the international part. I would say that, um, in terms of what our musical theater is going to be doing, we don't have a program in London, but we are in very active conversation with a theater in Italy that we are having uh, <laughs> developing a partnership with. And um, the plan is that it will be a summer program that is for credit, so students can use their tuition money, you know, towards going to Italy for the credits they they earn there, and it'll be a three or four week program with a theater professional theater company that's also a theater school in uh, the northern part of Italy and that will be another opportunity for performance because at the end of that summer session there'll be a joint musical performance between the Italian students and the American students together oh, in English my. yeah because you know the Italians don't have access to Broadway training musical theater training it's just not it's not an art form that they're super familiar with so they are so thrilled um, to be part of the partnership. You should get Lizzie McGuire to come and like <laughs> talk about it. the Lizzie <laughs> McGuire dream right here. You're going to meet your guy on the Vespa. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. I'm super excited. I'm going over there in May or June to get that kind of off the ground. Wow. So, yeah. and that's a credit plan. That's, that's a credit program that you're going to do. Yeah, that will be part of our musical theater workshop class. We have a number of semesters of musical theater workshop in the curriculum, and that that's where that credit will fit into things. That's amazing. So when you, it just seems like not too good to be true, but you guys have so many wonderful ideas. So it sounds like, huh, do you have like grants and endowments? Like how do you, how do you make this such an affordable program like talk to me about your leadership. Are they just like writing grants left and right for you guys or <laughs> how is this possible? Actually, yes. Um, so Dr. Karen Velos, who you met when we came to Pittsburgh, she came with me. She is the most brilliant. Sorry, there's a cat making a lot of noise over there. Um, <laughs> the most brilliant administrator and grant writer. She's just the kind of person who she always says, let's start with the dream and then figure out how to fund the dream. Like she doesn't say, let's start small and, and build something in a conservative sort of way. So she writes grants all the time for various things that go on in the school. And like her personal grant money then funds a lot of those things that um, kind of are extra in the programs in the music school. She's oh, also, she, has, wow. she has two theater degrees and she is also a professional dancer. And so she has a super, super strong interest in getting the musical theater off the ground because she's been working at it for, you know, a long time to try. So I guess my it. question is like, people send their kids to programs, but a bunch of us also send our kids to programs for the people. Like, is she staying around? Has she been there for a while? Are oh, you staying yeah. around? Like, what's... <laughs> She's been at FIU for either 30 years or almost 30 years. And so she's really committed to the school. And um, and she's she I don't think she's going anywhere. You know, her whole family's here. And so she yeah. started working there at nine. She like is the cutest little <laughs> <I know. laughs> she just has such she has such great energy. She's she, I've never worked with anyone who is as kind of forward thinking as she is and supportive and wants everyone to share creative ideas and is willing to try anything, you know, she's just, it's, it's a dream job for me to work with her. I love that you like your boss. That's oh my awesome. gosh. Totally. Totally. Cause I mean, I, I do believe that if you like, like if the professors and the, the directors like where they are, it, it translates really well into the program. Of course it does. Yeah, I love the faculty I work with. Really, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful group of people. It really is. That's awesome. Yeah. So you being in Florida, do you have like partnerships with like, I don't know, the, the cruise lines or the Panthers or like wh what other performing opportunities are there? Yeah, well, a couple of things. Don't take I away the Panthers from Molly. So forget the Panthers. Right. Take, like <laughs> dolphins. Like <laughs> 
Well, you know, we are working on some local partnerships with some theaters in the Miami area and also in the Broward County, which is near closer to Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, that kind of area. Um, and we're, uh, we do have a partnership we've had for a number of years with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines because they have a rehearsal space on FIU campus. And wow. so we'll be having opportunities for workshops and master classes, and also students will be able to audition for the cruise lines right here on campus, which is kind of fantastic. So for summer jobs or even jobs wow. after college, yep. Um, and so some of the theater programs that we're, or the theaters that we're talking to, we suspect that we'll have internship opportunities for students. And at the very least, lots of performing venues, because one of the visions that we have for the program, which I think is really cool, is that we want it to feel more like a repertory theater. So in a year, let's say we're doing, we have our four, our four main musical theater offerings that we do, two bigger shows and two cabarets. We want to take these all around South Florida and perform them in all different kinds of venues. Yeah. So, so we already have partnerships with all sorts of gorgeous, wonderful local performing venues, but we're looking to branch out a bit more into more kind of regional theater scene. FIU, the tour. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. So then it's like, this is what we're doing in our season this year in our repertory, you know, theater. We're doing these productions and they'll be taken, we'll take them all over the place. So and you guys are such a, a, a mecca. Miami is such a mecca for entertainment and music and appreciation of the art. So you will always have a built in, um, a, a built in audience. It's true. It's true. There's so much demand for live music here. There's so much jazz down here, obviously a huge amount of Latin music. We also have a fairly um, blossoming classical scene down here. It really is. Um, there's And there's tons of art here. I mean, that's another thing down here. You have art festivals all year round. There's just like so much culture going on all the time down here. That's absolutely true. Let, let me ask you a more personal question. You don't have to answer this if you don't feel as comfortable. Okay. But, oh, my uh, dog and my cat are playing games over there <laughs> my dog's going get off the phone so feed me um <laughs> but dom dom is at uncg and right. he has an extensive uh rolodex that he is not afraid to use yeah uh we like it that he is a working um professor and director like yeah. what does your rolodex look like and what's everyone else's rolodex look like and are are you going to bring in your friends to do master classes, which I think are really, really fun and a great networking source for kids. Yeah, so we already have a number of conversations happening and people coming in. I mean, I have I have the great advantage of having amazing friends and colleagues all over the world. And, um, you know, in the theater industry, in the even in the classical world and performing arts in general. And so um, for instance, one of the, well, one of the things is I started my, my, my do you hear this dog in the background? Isn't it crazy? She's chasing the cat. Um, oh, that was you. <laughs> I know, they, they love each other. It's crazy. Um, you know, I started my BFA at, at the University of Michigan in musical theater. And it's funny because when I look at all those people that I went to school with, I mean, they're still my friends and they're, they're my Facebook friends and they're the people I stay in touch with and talk about doing collaborations with, you know? And also we have, um, you know, Dr. Veloz, Karen, she worked on 75 different Broadway productions. Um, she's a, been a producer. She has um, worked in wow. press and um, she has two theater degrees herself and was a professional dancer. So, you know, she knows everybody everywhere. She's always like, oh, I'll bring so-and-so in, um, you know, to direct that show and I'll bring that choreographer in. And we just, between the two of us, we have a huge amount of contact in the industry. So if if my kid goes there and is a senior and like they're ready to do a senior showcase, where whatever that looks like in a couple of years, right? Like, will you be hands on enough with them to look at a contract for them to say, yeah, that's a good agent or no, that's not a good agent. Is that part of your wheelhouse going into this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, about our senior showcase, we definitely are doing one. We're kind of, we have a finger on the pulse of it right now, because I know that the things are transitioning a bit and not everybody's going to New York anymore. Sometimes they're bringing the people in, but um, it's definitely 
in the plan to, to be working toward that senior showcase. And, you know, Dr. Velos, here's another piece of it. She is the one who teaches that music business course. And she actually runs the entire music business department at FIU. So she... Wow teaches you about contracts. She teaches you about all kinds of negotiation, things like that. So absolutely, students will get a lot of feedback and a lot of um, information about how to move out from the college degree. Because you know, as well as I do, a lot of these kids graduate and they just don't know what to do next. Right. You know, it's not real world. Like you can learn something in a book yeah. or you can like do real world. Is that relationship going to keep on going? Because, you know, right now you don't have an alumni yeah. from the musical theater. Yeah. Like where do you see you guys helping the kids is, is super important to a parent, you know, like looking into the future. I totally agree. I mean, I'm a parent, you know, mm -hmm. I, to I totally get that. Um, so yeah, obviously, I mean, I think you know enough about me to know that with me, it's what you see is what you get. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't say it unless it's actually like that, <laughs> you know, like. Um, I like you, but are, is some other school going to be like, whoop, we like Dr. Stephanie, we're going to take her. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't see myself going anywhere. And as long as FIU will keep me, I don't see any reason why I would leave at this point. So, you no, pretty I, I, <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I, I feel like I've landed in the most perfect place and I can't wait until we get our first cohort. I'm just so excited about it because the plans that we're already discussing and the plans I already have for them, I just, I can't wait to get to know them, get to know their families. What I see about that's exciting about FIU is because you see those kids that really, really want like the college experience, the football team, the sorority, but they also yeah. want the conservatory style. And I can't think of any other program that gives you both other than maybe like Indiana, like, you know, like the, that gives you really right. both. It looks like you're a school within a school. Is that how the feel is? Is that what you're going yeah, for? Absolutely. I mean, we have almost 60,000 students total, right, in all of FIU, which is pretty big. And we have something like three or 400 different student organizations, a huge Greek life. There's like 30 different uh, fraternities, sororities. Um, we have tons of athletics. We have 17, I think, different NCAA athletic teams. Um, wow. I've heard we have, have an amazing women's soccer team. I haven't been to see them yet, but <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm excited about that. I think that's awesome. So yeah, we really do have that big college feel. And yet when you want to, you can just kind of escape back to your little conservatory family, you know? So for students who that's that fantastic. appeals to, the option is there. And it might change from year to year per kid. You know, you right. might just want a exactly. little break. Get out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So- Okay, when we met at um, Pittsburgh Unifieds and you were in the room with uh, NoCo and Danny and you guys were going back and forth about who's the better deal, I remember yeah. you talking about how inexpensive tuition is. Yeah. So has it gone up since we talked? Because it seems impossible <laughs> unless you're working. No, <laughs> it hasn't gone up. It's still um, right around 3000 for in-state per semester and um, right around 9,000 for out-of-state per semester. So it's pretty amazing. So how are you subsidizing the, you know what, I'm going, I'm not calling you out, but like what's room and board like there? Is it that, is that where you're making the money? Is that where you're like? <laughs> you know, I honestly don't know. I've never heard somebody complain that it's, that it's out of the ballpark of what most schools, um, you know, charge. I, I haven't looked it up personally, but I've never I'm heard- looking it up. I'm oh, are you? Oh, good. <laughs> okay, you can tell me what you find out. What a um, jerk. Yeah, I'm going to look this up on the cost of. Okay, yeah, let's see what you find out. Well, I'm looking. Talk to okay. me about the campus and like, okay, why, why, why go to Miami here, at FIU versus going to um, somewhere in Ohio? Somewhere in Ohio. <laughs> where it's snowing. No, go ahead. We have beaches everywhere. You can go to the beach, you can get to a beach within like 20 minutes. Um, you have uh, huge amounts of good food, good music, good art. Um, you know, we have several different campuses. The, the, the campus that I teach at is the main campus, which is called Modesto Medic. And that's okay. where the music school is located. And that is the central campus. So it, there are a couple of satellite campuses too, but, but, but definitely the students in the musical theater and the music school will spend the vast majority of time, if not all, on the central Modesto Midi campus. Okay, there's no way this can be right. <laughs> what, what did you find? It's $6,000 room and board per semester. Oh, see? 
cheaper than any other school that my kid ever offered. There you go. That's great. And That's uh, yeah, we have dorms. We have dorms, but there's also there are apartments that are just on the perimeter of the campus that um, basically serve the students too. So there's dorms, and we're also building some brand new dorms too, which look really swanky. There's pictures on your website that are beautifully ridiculous. Oh, good. <laughs> There's museums, 142 countries represented in our student body, 17 NCAA teams. They're good. Over 300 clubs and a bunch of this. art museums on campus. Oh, that's right. Oh, we have an amazing one right across from the music school too. The first and look one. at this. FIU experts available to discuss mental health resources. Yeah. Talk yeah, about that. Know anything that. about that other than it being awesome? Look at that. Well, I can tell you that I know some students who've taken advantage of the mental health resources, and I've heard it's really well done, really supportive. Wow. That's so, important. I mean, yeah. I and you know how that's important to me personally, too, like that, that I want, I want students to feel like they're going through their college experience without losing their minds. Um, you know, a lot of the, that's the other thing, a lot of the musical theater programs, I mean, it's like, there's not even time to eat in between classes, right? Uh, you know, I, I want this program to be um, manageable and super impactful, but also I want people to feel healthy and happy doing it, you know? So, right. yeah. Right. And I think COVID really, you know, changed the way the kids are. And there, there's, there's a greater need absolutely. for the mental health aspect for, for you yeah, to absolutely. acknowledge is so key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're but, seeing a lot of interesting kind of results of COVID in, in the last couple of years of classes for sure. And if you don't address it and you ignore it, you're going to have bigger problems for the kids. And and it looks right. I'm looking at your website with all the different articles about it. Like it's important and it's talked about. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you know, here's another thing. Like I've been a Buddhist for 20 something years and I do daily meditation and I know the impact it has on my life. And, you know, I, I have taught mindfulness um, meditation, like like workshops and things like that. And one of my plans is to basically do a weekly mindfulness session with, with the students in the program because performing artists need mindfulness training. They yeah. need well being training and they need to be able to take that time to kind of like calm their nervous systems down because it's hard to be a performing artist, you know? Wow. So, so that's, that's a kind of a personal mission of mine. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, and I only know you from, from meeting you obviously in person and getting to spend time with you working like you care you care about the kids and I, do. And I think that's important you're, you're not just caring about the kids that are going to end up at your program yeah no no I really yeah it's sort of a it's sort of I don't know it's a personal mission of mine and for me mentorship I feel like is something that I was I was born to be a mentor to young adults. Like that is, that is my age group. <laughs> Ask my <laughs> child who's 12. He'll say, yeah, that's not your age group, mom. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's important to me and it's important that here's the other thing. I've seen so many incredibly talented kids this season. It's, 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 it's stunning to me what audition like life is like compared to when I was auditioning for theater schools. Um, but I want every kid to end up where they want to be, where they're going to be served, where they're going to feel like that's their home and that's their support system and, and that they are going to feel like that's their new family for the next four or five or six years, you know? So ultimately, like all those Pittsburgh kids, so talented. Um, yeah. But in my heart, I want every single one of them to end up where they want to be. I mean, I'm hoping it's with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really am, but I really just... I really just want them all to land where they need to land for sure. Well, I, I would tell you that Marcy and I both say, maybe we should adopt more kids so we can send them to Stephanie. She's <laughs> awesome. I'm going to drink a beer with her. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my God. That's so cute. <laughs> but, just um, make sure they're not 12 when you send them. To <laughs> well, you know what? I, I Those are the questions that I've had from parents that are looking at FIU. Yep. Um, obviously you're, the kids are the ones that talk to you. So I really think that these are the, the questions that the parents have. The kids obviously love you. And um, oh, thank you. You know, I, I was asking to meet with you just so I can get the questions myself. But do you mind if I share this video with, with the parents, not only for them to hear from you, because I think that's important, yeah. but also for the juniors and the sophomores and, and to put FIU on the radar screen, because I think... 
yeah. the strong your kids are, the stronger the degree is going to be worth at the end of the day. And you're, you're going to attract some really strong candidates. Thank you. I hope so. I hope so. And, you know, and the other thing is, please feel free to let all the parents know. I'm happy to Zoom with them, phone call with them, answer their emails. I've already done so many Zooms with families. Like, I'm happy to meet your whole family and hear everybody's questions, you know? <laughs> like, I, I am an open, open door that way. So please, please share and please you know, invite people to reach out directly. That's great. Because I do know that some people have, um, when they applied to FIU, like they might have applied to the wrong program, they have to be pulled over to you, or they might have like waited to go to Chicago Unifies and be like, where's Ms. Where's Dr. Moore? I, I know. Yeah, I think I think I found all the ones that applied to the okay. wrong department. But yeah, if anybody has applied to FIU when they were intending to apply to my my program in the music school and you haven't heard from us, please reach out. <laughs> Great. Well, so you feel good about the the, the cohort that you're going to be getting, and you've oh, met yeah. some kids, huh? We have a couple. We have a couple of uh, super super fantastic kids that I'm pretty sure are coming in, and and it's interesting because these two also love to sing classically. They're both musical theater kids, but they've also trained classically. And so one of the things we decided this year is that we're giving our our classical students, the opportunity to audition for the musicals and vice versa. So the musical theater kids can audition for operas too, if they want to, you know, and fill out some of the ensemble roles. That's and um, yeah, yeah, I'm really, I, I just kind of can't wait till the class gets here. I, I think you said something in the beginning where you said this is a performance degree and how yeah. important that is for, for people to hear. Cause you know, we go to the school for training, right. but if you don't get to perform, it's not just getting a lead or getting an ensemble role or being a swing. It's everything, working with other people, learning to, yeah. to be dedicated, being on time, but oh, the tips that you make, like the performance is so important, so key. Yes. Uh, that's great that you're going to do that right off the bat. Yep. That's the plan. Can't wait. You're, you're great. Well, well I, I, I'm going to bootleg this somehow. I don't know how, but... <laughs> And uh, put it on that empty parent page. So you might be getting some questions, but. Oh my gosh, no, that'll be great. I, I'm totally happy to answer any questions. Yeah. And, and also encourage people to come down and visit. I mean, this what better time of year is there to come Are down you here? Me? <laughs> then February come on down <laughs> oh my gosh you are so welcome to come down here anytime you're wonderful I'm gonna share this with Marcy oh, thank you for the thank, you, okay. thank um, you you guys are wonderful too what you guys have done is just incredible and you're really changing the landscape of that audition process through your kindness and through your your incredible generosity so thank you so much thank you bye bye-bye